Hi, and welcome back. It is chapter 21. We are in Cambodia with a runny, and the year is 2009, very early in the year. When I was writing all of the three women's stories, a runny story was the one that I had the most trouble with writing. And I'm really not sure why that is, other than with the other two women, their story was very much about survival, you know, surviving, murdering your husband, life in prison, and for grandmother being a refugee. Where for a runny, disappointment at not being able to have a child was 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 her battle and I think I just found that really hard and and felt for her so let's hear what's happening with a runny my breasts are tender and my once flat abdomen possesses a slight roundness can I be I hold my breath. Is it possible? The timing is right. My mind begins to race as I silently count back the days to when my last monthly came. My head nods back and forth, processing this information. It is definitely possible. I try to contain the excitement, but it's too late. I'm squealing out loud before I can stop myself. My mother is the first to respond when she enters the main room in my home to witness me dancing about. A runny, she calls out. She does not need to ask why I'm dancing. The delight that has spread across my face clearly announces my condition. My highly contagious joy causes her to dash around the room to join me in my dance. We spin around as if it's a large dancing floor. Laughing and giggling, we celebrate my victory. How far along, she wants to know. Not far, I confide. Chan doesn't know. Chan doesn't, I confirm. When will you tell him? Tonight, I say. My entire workday responds to my mood. The tourists are in fine form and generous with their tips and wit. I feel as if I can fly, and I do, soaring high above the tables of content tourists. Even the Bayan temple senses my elation and sends congratulatory smiles my way. Our dream is about to come true. We are having a baby, our much loved and badly wanted baby. If I thought I had wanted a baby before, knowing there is a tiny life inside me fuels my love even more, as does seeing my husband bask in the knowledge he's going to be a father. Chan's face continually wears a smile and I hear him humming happily in between each breath. Our bedtime ritual now involves my husband sweetly singing a song he has made up about us becoming parents. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. When he finishes, we lie in the comfort of each other's arms and we wait for sleep. Every night, just as I'm about to drift away, Chan kisses my hand and says, I love these hands. I love you. I have always loved you. I didn't think I could love you more. And then he touches my belly. I sleep with a smile in my heart, a smile more precious than when we were first married and I used to fall asleep after our lovemaking. I sleep now with the knowledge that I'm carrying our love. Our joy is short-lived. I wake two weeks later to a cramping that releases a gush of scarlet dreams. When two loves have flown as high as Chan and I, a fall downwards is so devastatingly far. Tomorrow, we will see what grandmother is up to at the Watt. When we last left her, the Thai government didn't want her. So that situation is only going to get worse. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to my channel.